Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation this morning is on the controversy concerning the electronic transmission of results. Uh, there has been conversations in the last uh, few weeks uh, about uh, whether the Independent National Electoral Commission will uh, be allowed to transfer election results electronically or not. Of course, uh, there was also the vote uh, that went uh, 52 in favor and, of course, 28 uh, and uh, 28 also absent. It was a little uh, controversial in the last couple of days. This morning, we're speaking with uh, Toju Onaiwu as an inf information technology expert. Uh, who's joining us uh, via Zoom. Good morning and thanks for joining us, Mr. Onaiwu. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for joining us. All right, so, so let's um, start with the controversy. Um, some people have described it you know, as disappointing that uh, we are stuck in this place where there's still a conversation concerning whether or not to allow for uh, electronic transmission of results. INEC you know, had stated that they you know, have the capacity to transmit electronically. Uh, but the National Assembly doesn't seem to allow or agree with them entirely. So let's get your thoughts, first of all, on the controversy. Oh, yes. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty disappointing, but it's not so strange. Uh, we are fond of, as a people, having, we need to keep going back and forth on doing what is right. Uh, this thing, the electronic transmission of results has been tested in some states already, in elections, by two elections, and, uh, even parliamentary elections in some states, and it worked. So why are we going back and forth? So I'm disappointed, but not surprised because of the way we were fond of going back and forth on what we normally just do. So yes, I'm disappointed, but not surprised. Okay, the, the, there is um, the argument with regards uh, uh, penetration of 2G and 3G technology to the most remote areas in Nigeria. So uh, what, what information uh, can you share with us with regards how far uh, 3G technology is um, spread across Nigeria. All right, we're going to have to reconnect with him and get that um, you know, question in. Uh, the, the conversation really is about how far and wide you know, the penetration of 2G and 3G network is in Nigeria, because that's one of the things that has been mentioned. There's also the security aspect. You know, some people have said, oh, you know, these things can be, uh, can be hacked, you know, and they don't want results mm -hmm. to you know, be, be hijacked you know, halfway through the process. Um, those are some of the concerns okay. that have been stated, um, you know, and then some other people are saying that, oh, you know, we, we don't want a situation where some areas get electronic transfer results and, and others, others do don't. not get yes. electronic transfer yes. results. So we hope that, you know, Mr. Naiwu will be able to share with us, you know, how far, um, um, how, you know, well, uh, we have 3G and 2G penetration, you know, has uh, spread across Nigeria mm -hmm. uh, to see if that argument actually works. Um, well, I think last week we had spoken about the legal perspectives, you know, how the Constitution already guarantees INEC the powers to make that decision, and it has nothing to do with the National Assembly or with the NCC. But we, we hope that we can get that. Yes, indeed. Uh, this issue really is something I think we need to sort out as soon as possible, because if we're still discussing these issues, even though, you know, people might say we have time, we have time, but we know how these matters can drag on, you know, they're postponed, you know, they're, you know, and all of that. And before you know, it seems like 2023 sneaks up on us. I hope it's something we can co finally conclude this year, because INEC has released statements saying they can authoritatively yeah. and transmit election results electronically. But the lawmakers who should give them power, which I also find weird because INEC should be an independent electoral body. Absolutely. So the Senate and all the lawmakers, you know, that should give them the power, you know, has put that their ability to transmit results electronically in doubt. So it seems there's a deadlock here. Other analysts have brought up the possibility of INEC taking this to court to say we should be an independent election body. The constitution guarantees our independence. So we should not be subject to an NCC um, concern if there's a security risk and all that. There are risks that our, my, you know, our monies could be, our uh, accounts could be hacked. All these risks exist. That's why there should be risk assessments. That's mm -hmm. why Nigeria has the funds to conduct elections. So we should be able to sort these out as soon as possible. Um, thanks for joining us again, Mr. Naiwo. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Very good. All right. So I was asking, you know, um, what you can share with us re with regards to 2G and 3G penetration across Nigeria. There's uh, some arguments that uh, that might be one of the reasons this might be difficult to pull off, that there are certain areas across the country that do not have adequate 2G and 3G uh, yes, network. Okay. Yes, yes. It's, 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 it
uh, I, I, it's really not about uh, technology. It's about what we want as a people. What is it that we want to do? We want to have credible elections. We want to have elections that are, that when you people go to court, the court will say no, you have no case here. So, so that it will stop this incidence of having uh, uh, the uh, judiciary giving victory to elections. That we want to stop that. So in other ways, in other words, what do we want as a people? We want a we want credible elections. So the technology is not the issue. Technology is available. As I said before, we've done this election. We've done we've done transmission of results in some states. In some states, in gubernatorial elections, and it was successful. So it's left for us to now isolate the areas where we do not have the technology, where the penetration is not good or it's not strong enough or it's not available, and begin to talk to the telcos to have all of these areas covered. Besides that, IMEC has even done it in such a way that you can actually uh, uh, upload the results. When you get to areas where the signal is good and strong, it will link up, it will be uploaded straight to the to their servers. So, like I said before, it is, a, it is for us, it's for me, it's what is it that we want as a people? You understand? What do we want? What do we want to achieve? What do we want to do? Okay. Uh -huh. So if we, if we are bent on having credible elections, the technology to make it happen is available in Nigeria. So they will have the telcos, over five or four or five of them, available, they will make it happen. We've done this in some states, and it worked. So this old uh, thing of uh, the, the 2G not available, available, no, that is not, it's not the issue at all. Mm. Do we want to have credible elections? Do we want to have it in such a way that when people finish voting, the, the results are entered into the uh, result sheet and are uploaded, they are credible? Not to let out somebody go and change them. Is that what we want? Is that what we want? The technology is available. M That's Mr. Onaiwu, you are an ITS yes. expert, so you can answer this question, you know, with the with the okay. facts. Um, the Senate has cited, you know, NCC, Nigerian Communications Commission, and they are, you know, saying that there's a risk risk of hacking election results. From your IT mm. perspective, do you think Nigeria can put in put in place the infrastructure, the security infrastructure, to ensure that the election results are not hacked? Do you think we have the capab capability to do that? Good. Thank you. Yes. Um, it is like this. It's about cost-benefit analysis, risk analysis, just looking at the risk involved in whatever it is you want to do. What are the risks involved in, in electronic transmission of results? Of course, there are technology risks, but can they be mitigated? The answer to that is yes. So yes, there are risks, but the risks can be mitigated. Everything IT, everything technology, there are trails. And you can put safeguards. INEC, there are so many ways INEC, IT gurus in INEC can get all of these things sorted out. So there's no point going through it here on, here on, on air. But the point is that there are risks, but the risks can be mitigated. And besides that, whereby the action is eventually carried out, you can track the action and you can even trace the action and also get the people uh, uh, get the people who are responsible for the uh, for the hack uh, arrested or prosecuted even the results that they will want to upload by whatever means they choose to do it you can even identify that there are it trails whatever you do there are trails so there are risks yes the risk can be mitigated yes and the risk also uh, uh, in this case you know the benefit far to the risk, in my opinion, in having our results transmitted electronically. Okay, so you're basically saying that, Mr. Anayawaju, that Nigeria actually has the capability to transmit results electronically. Is that what you're saying? Without a doubt, Nigeria has the capability. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, when we talk, I, I, can you break this down or make it as clear as possible? When we're talking about electronic transmission of results. What, yes. what is the process really? Is it through text messaging or is it through, you know, the internet? Exactly. What okay, exactly fine. do yes. they mean? Okay. Now, what, what, was, what was done in Edo State uh, by time election, which uh, I was, it was part of, I was involved in, because it's my state, that's why I reside, is this. I let set up a portal, okay? I let set up a portal for the result of the election. And I let gave a link to their... Uh, presiding of the electoral officers, that after the counting of the results and the results have been entered into the elect, uh, result sheet by unit per word, you go ahead and upload such to the to a portal to a link that they're giving to their agents. 
to their uh, presiding of the uh, electoral officers. So that's exactly what it is. So that's the point. So the results are, are entered into the, the uh, result sheet. Then you take a snapshot, a picture of it. Then you upload it. In other words, you just take the picture and upload the picture. It's like a JPEG. You just upload it, the picture. It's a JPEG, really, uh, so that you, you cannot edit it. You can make it PDF if you want to, but just upload the JPEG and upload the results. It will capture the, the parties, the results, the people who signed, the signatures, everything. So that's exactly what I need. Well, that's the whole essence of electronic transmission. So from wherever you are, you can see the results. So that process is done from the uh, World Collection Center to the uh, 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 Local Government Collection Center. So you definitely have all the results uplinked, you know, already in, in, in the cyberspace. So that's that's the, that's, the, that's what it that's what it entails. Well, if you remember, in in the, you know, right after the 2019 elections, in the uh, uh, court cases that followed, there were. Sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry. If you remember, after the 2019 general elections. The court cases that followed, there were conversations about the INEX server and if it was active during the elections or if it was used during the elections. Um, do, do you think we still will have that challenge if we decide to go forward with this? Um, do, does the server still exist? Was it the same server that was used in the Edo State elections? The electronic transmission result, like I explained before, is just saying. You take you take a, a snapshot, a picture of the result sheet, upload it to the um, to a link to, a, to the, like a web link, uh, exactly. Now uh, every one of these things are in one form or one server or the other. Uh, so it's not like one particular server we will have one problem. No, no, no. 2019, yes, a server was mentioned and we're a bit concerned about server will be hacked. It's still the same thing. It's, it's about security of your IT infrastructure, uh, which I know the INEC is very, very well aware of. I will do everything they can to make sure that they are secure. In any case, they can be, you can track or uh, any attempt to hack or, you know, like I said, if when it comes to technology, the, there are risks, but they are also mitigating uh, 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 things you can do to ensure that uh, that the risk can minimize, and where the, the eventual threat eventually uh, comes takes place, you can uh, trail them, you can track them, and you can do some uh, remediation of whatever actions that were attempted or mm. done. Yeah. Okay. So um. Also, we know that the Senate said they are basing uh, their decision on an NCC uh, submission, which is that there's a risk attached when you transmit results electronically. Yeah. Do you think that the NCC should be involved in election conversations? And also, if yes, um, why do you think they're not focusing on the solutions? You know, like you mentioned, that the risk can be mitigated instead of the challenge. Well, um, you know, the, 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 the questions are quite hard, but um, I would like to want to say the NCC as a regulatory body, the, I, I think I, I listened to what well, I read some of the things that the guy that from NCC said. He uh, was trying to give the penetration of uh, uh, 2G, 3G across the country. Uh, not really coming out to answer the question of whether it is yes or a no, you know, it was a bit ambivalent. But the point of the matter is that um, INEC is saying that they've had conversations with the technology, uh, the telecommunications providers, and they have guarantees that by 2023 we'll be able to conduct this election, we we'll need to conduct the election and transmit the results electronically. I, I think we should believe INEC. They are empowered by law, by the Constitution, to conduct elections. And if they say that it can be done, so be it. Oh. And, and to adduce any reason why uh, all of this is not clear, you know, between INEC, between the, standards, the legislators and NCC, I don't know. I think your guess <laughs> is as good as mine as to why all of this is. You know, some people are just afraid for unnecessarily, but there's no point for, for the fear. That, that's right. that's what I will say. Tojo and I will thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Uh, thanks for speaking yeah. with us. Um, all right. It's just pretty funny how 
uh, we are in a country where there has been, in the last, you know, three, four, four, five years, you know, there's been a lot of very brilliant uh, strides with information technology, with startups. You know, some of them have been, been bought off for $200 million, if you remember. We have some of the most brilliant minds with regards to information technology in Nigeria, but yet <laughs> we can't transmit results. No, we actually can. He mentioned we can. It's the willpower well, at the end of yeah, the day. You know, but the, Do we really well, want well, to transmit results Well, there's people who feel like that we cannot. Um, it just doesn't, and, and it, it makes, it gives more credence to people who say, well, this is really just about, you know, certain people who are scared about losing the elections because there is no excuse. And like you, the, one of the questions you asked, the last question you asked actually was, um, was uh, is where this is coming from. Why aren't we focused on how can we exactly, how can we solve this? We have all the resources that we should be able to put into Because even this. with manual, manual collation, manual transmission, there are risk, risk of loss of yes. lives, ballot box, box snatching, and we'll continue to all use the insecurity. So those risks, there are risk any, any way you look at manual, electronic. So it's how, what do you think is the best, what's the best, what's the best challenge? Which, we, is, which, would be, which seems to be online according to what you know, the, these experts are saying. So really, we should focus on the solutions. And do we have the solutions? Yes. It's just the political will to implement them. That's what it seems like. A 25-year-old right from any of the startups across Nigeria, information technology startups across Nigeria today can solve this problem easy. Um, it's not actually a problem, but since they've decided to make it a problem, any young person that works in the IT sector can simply solve, solve this It's thing possible now. that there yeah, are many um, youth who have solutions to this, and maybe I've even pitched them, but, you know, not hearing a word back. But no the point is that it's a solution that we can solve. Yeah. There's a problem. Oh, right, it's a problem solve. that we can solve. All right, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're celebrating women on a Monday morning, and that's because there is a new bank MD in Nigeria, and she's female. And so we're going to be having a quick conversation about that and uh, what more strides Nigeria needs to take with regards more women in uh, positions like that. Stay with us.